I'm just thinking, man. That's... Which leads me into my question. What's your question? I heard on the news today, and I want to hear your, your opinion. Fat people got to pay more for a second seat on a plane. You know, I have a problem with that. Yeah? I do. I do. I, I, you know what? I get the airlines, you know, policy of, you know, we're losing money. But, hey, I've seen, you know, people of heft are people too. Yes. This is true. And I've seen, you know, there was up here and, you know, it might not be the same. And I could completely be talking out of my ass right now. So bear with me on this. There was a place up here in Sacramento. And it was an indoor sports and recreation center. And it was two stories. And yeah. <clears throat> and um, they got hit with a, you know, one of the lawsuits that the people in the wheelchairs couldn't get yeah. to the second floor. And they couldn't afford to put in an elevator. And, you know, the yeah. people had, you know they had kids parties and this and that. And they said, we just, there's, you know, we just don't have a way. It's an old building. We, you know, we'll go out of business. And they kept pressing it and pressing it. And sure enough, the company went out of business. And it was one of the the most you know, coolest, you know, places, I guess. I had never been there. But it was kind of a big loss to the community um, in that way. So, you know, my take is is that, you know, you have to you have to kind of be real about it. You know, if mm-hmm. someone's big, you know, they, then and it takes them two seats. You know, it takes them two seats. You know, if, if you can't get upstairs, I'm sorry, you can't get upstairs. You know, I... We're not purposely trying to exclude anybody or anything like that. It kind of is what it is. But I, can, I don't see how you can sit there and look somebody in the face going, you know, you can't ride this flight. Yeah. You know, when when really on the next flight there's going to be three empty seats and they're going to get their money back. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just, I just find it as kind of a, a BS situation. I think, you know, if someone's heavy, they're heavy, heavy and you figure it out. Now, if all the seats are taken and you kind of tell them, you know what, Either you're going to be uncomfortable, but we got to push you to the next flight. Is that offensive? I don't know. What do you think? Um, Uh-oh. Did I lose you? No. I hear you. You hear me? Hello? Hello? Are you Hello? There? Oh, you're back. I hear you. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I, you, you went away. Uh, so what, what's your take on that? You know, being... being Slightly heavy, <laughs> or morbidly obese. Either way. <laughs> I, I am outraged. I, I kind of get it, but, but here, here's my take. Mm-hmm. Much like football stadiums and baseball stadiums and everything nowadays, mm-hmm. parking spaces. You know, everything. So they're trying to get more and more in. Right. Now, if you had. You know, regular recliner. I can fit fine in my office chair, purchased right. from Pacific Coast Furniture. <laughs> <laughs> and this isn't a big and tall chair. This isn't designed for a fat ass. Mm-hmm. It holds me just fine. Why don't they just make the chairs to fit, you know, most people to begin with? Right. And then, yeah, if you got some 600 pounder, well, that fat ass should pay for it. <laughs> Anybody my size or smaller should be. <laughs> so what we're saying is you're the template. If I, yeah, if that same person could fit in the first class seat fine. Right. Then they should be able to fly. They should be able to fly. Yeah. Just quit making the seats so chintzy. Oh, and and, and not only that, I mean, it, it's almost the other way too. What if you're super, I mean, not even super tall. If you're 6'2", your knees are bumping everything on flights now. Yeah. You know, and and I'm not even that tall. I'm probably six, maybe, on a good day, yeah. and and my knees are right there. So I've never heard them boot somebody for being too tall, but I know, you know, I don't know how they fit them, and they're like a grasshopper. I really don't know, but yeah, I, I think people just need to be a little bit more accommodating on both sides. If you know, if you roll up and you know you got some extra room and you, some extra seats, yeah. dude. You know, just move to make it a come. You know, I'm sorry. This place has been here for 20 years. Yeah. Um, you know, I I can't afford to pull an elevator and to get you upstairs. I'm really sorry. I'm going to go out of business. Well, then nobody can enjoy this. Go out of business. Yeah. You know, I'd like to squeeze in. Look at that. Yeah. You know, that was, I got to tell you, it wasn't, you know, it was um, an experience. 
going yeah. to the old squeeze in. I mean, it was the furthest thing from comfortable, but it was kind of an event to being jackhammered in there. But, yeah. you know, they got served too many lawsuits where, you know, there, it wasn't accessible and they had to move it. And even though the food was, you know, OK or whatever, it's not the same. No. I don't know. People just need to chill it you out. You know? Think of both sides of the argument. Say, say it again. You're kind of taking both sides of the argument. I, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I totally am taking both. I say I understand, but I think on both sides there has to be some. There has to be some understanding. You know, I don't think that there's a, a straight black and white rule when you're coming to. I mean, what? Who's to say what's what's the right size? Me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, what's the right size? You know, uh, you know, and I truly feel bad that people can't make them, you know, help themselves get up the steps. But I got to tell you, I'm sure that if someone were to ask, we can help you get in. As long as they can offer a way to get you up there. Right. We can help you get in. And that's what they were saying at the restaurant when I talked to them. They said, hey, we were more than accommodating, but, the, the you know, there's these, there's this select few of people, you know, and it's not. You know, and it's not like it's everybody well, in a wheelchair. Those are professional. I mean, that should become a... Uh, it is professional. Cause those are people that are doing, doing that. that, yes. They're they doing get that paid pretend. doing that. And, yeah. and and it's one of those things where, you know, no, I want to be able to do it myself. Yeah. You know, or you're going to pay me. You know, yeah. and I, I think that's kind of a BS. So, yeah, I am on both sides of the fence. But I think there's got to be understanding. The knuckleheads wreck it. Yeah. Along with the lawyers. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of the lawyers. No. Not at all. Unless yeah. I get in trouble, then I'm a big fan of the lawyers. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, on the on the this morning, the guy said, "Well, if you're going to defend the fat people, then you should have to fly nonstop to New York next to the fat guy and <laughs> be squeezed into your seat while he's oozing over <laughs> and sweating all over you." <laughs> and I'm, a, I'm I can get that. Okay, so yeah. Well, right. I mean, if you got three. If you got three people on the larger than average scale, okay, make them sit in the same row, and then just deal with it. And deal with it. Yeah. If you guys think that you can fit in that seat, go ahead and fit in that seat. Sit next to each other, and inconvenience the other fat people. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Don't spill over into my. That's section. that's that's. that's... <laughs> What's the opposite of compassionate? I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to find. Well, but I am one of them. Well, you're, you're you know. You're, in fact, honestly, what? I don't even buckle my seatbelt when I get on the plane. I pretend to. <laughs> I, pretend I pretend to, you, but I don't do it. You're rogue, man. What are you, X Games flyer? What the hell? It is not comfortable. It is not comfortable. And in the event of emergency, I don't want to be trapped. <laughs> I want to be the first guy knocking all the women and children out of my way. <laughs> Get to the emergency exit to save my own ass. <laughs> and I have to be ready to fly the plane if anything goes wrong. Remember oh, my God. <laughs> you are somewhat, you know what? A couple of weeks back when I called you a control freak and a diva, <laughs> you are leaving up to it, man. You are living up to it right now. Okay, so number one, I can't be wasting my time with, you know, Three quarters of a second, I'm buckling my belt. I can't. <laughs> nope. Can't do it. Just bring it to, to, to action with my ninja-like reflex. <laughs> That's it. And I'm, <laughs> if I knock on the cabin door, I'm going to need you guys to step aside. I get it. <laughs> I don't knock. I, I just barrel down. I barrel down the door. <laughs> oh, my God. And there better be snacks and refreshments. Samuel, I don't care. Samuel L. Jackson isk, <laughs> kind of just throwing dough. Well, good for you. Well, I'm just saying, you know what you want, you know, and and there's, yeah. you know, well, good for you. Holy crap! You know, when, if we go on vacation yeah. together ever again, yeah. separate flights, separate flights, separate flights. Well, they said, and you know how now you got it. Does your bag fit in this box? Right. If it does, you can carry it on. If not, you got to check it. Yeah, At but there's no rule for the fat person, so there's like, you know, does your ass fit in this box? Dude, when he... <laughs> so maybe that's it. So, so you're if telling my me... ass doesn't fit in that box, then you've got to put me in a big crate and check me in. Oh shit! With the oversized luggage. <laughs> oh shit! 
<laughs> so you're telling me, like when you get up to the counter and they have that little box that you put your luggage in to determine whether it's going with you or not, yeah. they got to have like a seat there. Yeah. And then, oh, that's <laughs> that's not degrading. <laughs> Well, because as it is now, the stewardess just comes up and goes, okay, no, you. <laughs> Fat ass, off the plane. <laughs> off the plane. <laughs> She's randomly selecting. At her whim. She's profiling. She is profiling. <laughs> She's visually profiling. There is no in-writing rule. There is. Because once they have an in-writing rule, then it's up for legal debate. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going to believe, me or your lion eyes? <laughs> You're profiling. No, I'm kind of looking at you, really. <laughs> it's the shirt. You know, I was going to wear black. Horizontal instead of vertical. <laughs> I am more thinned out. Get my bag, I'll show you. Oh, it's checked? Ah, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, I th- okay. I think we fixed this whole thing now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we did. Well, I, okay. So, okay, okay. So the deal is number one. Um, now, of people of fluffiness, none of no one has to buckle their seats, or is it just you? Well, the law says everybody has to buckle. Their okay. Seats. Okay. So it's just everybody but you. Um, I don't. You don't. Okay. I, I pretend to. I go through the illusion of buckling my seat. I reach for it, and right as the stewardess is walking by, checker braids, I'm in the process of buckling it, and she nods and moves on, and I throw it back down behind me. And I yell, "Where's my snack?" <laughs> I think I got it now. <laughs> so, so the passenger Blanco in seat 13E, very accommodating, that guy. <laughs> he wants the cart and we haven't left the gate. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. I think I'd just be glad I'm not drinking anymore. Oh, man. I just got my seat when we were drinking. What's that? When I was drinking, I didn't even get my seat. I went straight, <laughs> to the, straight to the stewardess quarters and just hung out there and slammed beers. <laughs> what is up? What's that? I'm <laughs> Sir, you got to get to your seat. <laughs> I can still stand. I can still stand. <laughs> You're awesome. 